thanks a lot for that. Um, okay, now we're closing to the last speaker. This is a different species. Uh, this is an attorney and a representative of the civil society, Eco Peace for the Middle East, and he will be able to describe uh, his uh, involvement in this assembly uh, much better than I am because he's an attorney. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, firstly, uh, thank you for the conference organizers, for Yossi, uh, the German Embassy, for uh, uh, inviting me here to briefly present. Uh, my name is Gilan Bromberg, and I'm the uh, co-director of Ecopeace Middle East, Yedidei Kedur Aretz, Mizrach Tichon. We're quite a unique organization of Israelis, Palestinians, and Jordanian civil society working together. I direct our Israeli operations. We have a Palestinian director and a Jordanian director uh, that worked together for the last 22 years uh, on uh, transboundary environmental issues. And my presentation is really completely different in the sense that I will not mention the word birds. Uh, yes, very odd. But clearly uh, the presentation or the, the issues and the ideas were considered important uh, to be heard. And I think they very nicely build up on the uh, presentation given earlier of uh, of uh, Raz, of um, uh, relating to the Jordan River and the Dead Sea, and of, uh, of Professor Pinchas, which speaks to the dire situation of uh, climate change and, and water uh, issues uh, in our region. So uh, we're, we're not a, a university, we're not a, a research institute, we're a civil society uh, organization, but we do uh, hire some of uh, the leading scientists, Israeli, Palestinian, and Jordanian uh, to undertake applied research, um, which is what we're doing here uh, with the support of the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung uh, uh, in both uh, Ramallah and in Tel Aviv. Um, so the presentation that I want to uh, speak about is the issue of how can we overcome some of the dire geopolitical issues um, uh, that we face uh, using natural resources uh, and particularly water and energy to do so. And when we look at the use of natural resources to cement peace, there are many good examples. And the European Union is perhaps the strongest and best example. The European Union was built on the foundation of an agreement straight after the Second World War based on coal and steel. And that's the coal and steel uh, uh, community agreement where Germany and France decided that if they can uh, move from cooperation over coal and steel, the most important natural resources on continental U uh, Europe, um, maybe uh, uh, wars will not uh, re be repeated like the Second World War. But it's not only in the example of Europe, it's also we look at other uh, areas of Indo India and Pakistan on uh, the building of hydrological dams where water and energy are shared between upstream and downstream countries. And even uh, Turkey and Iraq continue to cooperate on water and energy issues, be it gas, um, uh, uh, oil, and uh, uh, Turkish uh, water. So uh, 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 linking natural resources, uh, natural resource issues and trying to create geopolitical stability is something not foreign and something that what our study, uh, supported by the Konrad Adenauer uh, Stifting, is trying to look at. And we're specifically uh, looking at uh, water and energy uh, in our region, uh, Israel, Palestine, Jordan. And when we look at the current situation, we really see a complete failure of, uh, uh, of any water uh, energy uh, nexus between our uh, uh, individual economies and certainly on a cross-border uh, level. You see, we, we see currently that 25% of Jordan's uh, electricity production goes to the movement of water resources. Uh, in Israel, we're approaching 10% of electricity, mostly because of uh, uh, increased uh, desalination uh, that takes place on Israel's uh, coastline, we see uh, uh, geopolitical arrangements that um, uh, lead to domination or lead to dependence 
uh, on the Israeli-Palestinian front. Uh, Palestinians are completely dependent on uh, uh, Israel and, 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 and approvals from the Joint Water Committee to uh, access additional water resources. Um, we see more one-way exchanges where uh, uh, perhaps uh, Jordan will become even more dependent uh, uh, in the future uh, in buying more water uh, from Israel, and, and we'll speak about that uh, later. We see that a system of competition leads to the complete demise and uh, the example that we've heard lots about um, until now, uh, uh, all, all morning, of the demise of the Dead Sea uh, and also the Jordan River speaks to a mindset of uh, competition where each side grabs everything uh, that they can for themselves at the detriment, uh, uh, to the detriment of their neighbor, but also to the detriment, complete detriment of uh, the environment. And we see it in, we also see in a mindset of conflict that uh, uh, energy islands are created. Um, Israel cannot link with any of its uh, Arab neighbors uh, in our electricity grids. Um, and that it comes at a tremendous cost uh, where we could have meet, where we could meet peak demand uh, uh, if we could buy electricity from our uh, respective uh, neighbors. The worst case scenario, uh, uh, literally at our front door, is the case of Gaza, where Gaza has completely run out of water, 1.8 million people. We can blame Hamas, but the fact remains that 1.8 million people, one hour south of us, have no clean water to drink anymore. And they're drinking water that's unhealthy for human consumption. They've also uh, don't have sufficient electricity. And uh, therefore, we see uh, a sewage treatment plant. This is newly built. Um, it's a white elephant. There's no electricity to treat the sewage. And we also pay directly the price because the raw sewage of Gaza, this is raw sewage from northern Gaza, 1.8 million people do not have a sewage treatment facility that works because there's no electricity. Even what was recently built is not operating. So when there's a complete disconnect, and we can blame the conflict, but it doesn't help us. The fact is that uh, we will, Gazans are currently paying the price, but we are also paying the price in the pollution of our uh, Mediterranean coastline, which we are dependent on for desalination of, uh, uh, of water. So we do think that there are uh, uh, geopolitical constructs um, uh, that can create a nexus of water and energy interdependence between our various uh, 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 neighbors that can help uh, uh, solve some of these issues. We see a, uh, an agreement signed between an Israeli and a Palestinian uh, mayor on the treatment of sewage. Um, where the sewage of the Palestinian community is flowing into a treatment plant uh, in Israel and we're able to solve in the most effective and efficient uh, manner so that sewage doesn't flow down the Hadera stream and doesn't pollute common groundwater. Um, we see uh, agreements that have been signed uh, between uh, uh, the Palestinian water minister, Jordanian water minister, uh, then uh, Israeli water minister, here in the framework of the Red dead, which our organization doesn't uh, necessarily support, but nevertheless, uh, we see uh, agreements being uh, signed on the exchange of water, which we think are very important. Um, uh, much of the technological uh, innovation has been led by Israel and has been led by Israel in its world leadership in treating of sewage. Israel is the number one world leader. Uh, over 80% of our sewage is treated and reused for agriculture. Spain is next with 16%. Israel is also a world leader in desalination uh, with, as, as we've heard uh, earlier, some 500 million cubic meters of desalinated water already produced. By the end of the year, we will uh, come to a capacity of 650 million cubic meters with the Ashdod uh, desalination plant now coming onto board. Um, uh, also, uh, Jordan and Palestine are very keen, and in the Arab world are also, uh, Jordan is a world leader in uh, the Arab world in treating its sewage. It wants to uh, further uh, uh, advance on that. Um, the Palestinians are also very keen on both uh, wastewater uh, uh, reuse 
use and treatment, but also want to see a desalination plant built uh, in Gaza. All the, of these solutions, however, are all energy intensive. They require uh, 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 more electricity and in the current scenario will require uh, uh, the burning of more fossil fuels uh, in a, uh, at a time and as we've seen when uh, more and more uh, release of fossil fuels into the atmosphere is leading to less uh, precipitation, less water. And therefore the proposal uh, that we're studying uh, uh, with a team of Israeli, Palestinian and Jordanian uh, researchers is the creation of a uh, water energy uh, community uh, whereby renewable energy um, uh, that we propose that will be mostly produced uh, in Jordan would provide the electricity to meet many of the uh, water needs of our uh, three uh, peoples. Um, so, you know, the, the technology is proven. Israel is, is already a world leader with uh, now the fifth uh, uh, desalination plant coming on board uh, in Ashkelon. Uh, the Palestinians, uh, led by the World Bank, have a plan to build a 50 million cubic meter uh, uh, desalination plant in Gaza. Uh, uh, there's no electricity at the moment uh, uh, to uh, operate such a desalination plant, therefore uh, they, uh, uh, they can't uh, move forward. But uh, because um, uh, you know, the Israeli and the Gaza uh, coastline is on, the, is on the Mediterranean, then there's real opportunities here uh, uh, to desalinate, while in the Jordanian case, um, uh, Jordan is very far, or Jordan's major cities are very far from uh, the potential to desalinate at any reasonable cost and as we saw from uh, 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 the earlier presentation on, on the Jordan and that mentioned the Red Dead, the cost of uh, uh, bringing water from uh, uh, Aqaba to the capital Amman is very, very expensive and beyond the economic means of most of the Jordanian uh, public. Um, uh, on the other hand, Jordan uh, is perhaps one of the best uh, countries in the world to produce solar energy. Uh, one, because of the high uh, radiation uh, uh, levels, but also because it has large tracts of open land. Um, uh, in Israel, the West Bank, uh, uh, there's very few uh, open areas that, that would allow uh, large-scale uh, solar energy production to, to take place. Um, uh, for Israel, it's the Negev, but half the Negev is nature reserves, and we will not allow those nature reserves to be altered. And the other half is military training areas, and the military won't uh, give up uh, those areas. So um, uh, the, uh, the advantage of Jordan in becoming uh, the major, a major supplier of renewable energy for its own needs and uh, uh, for Israeli and Palestinian uh, needs um, uh, are, are very much the there. And why is this important? Well, firstly, um, the current situation is a situation of dependence. When uh, uh, Israel and Jordan signed an agreement last year that Israel will sell 50 million cubic meters of additional water to Jordan, there were large calls in the Jordanian parliament that uh, parliamentarians would rather die of thirst than drink more water from Israel. Because there's a sense that Israel will hold the tap. Israel will be able to decide and dominate uh, uh, Jordanian uh, national interests. Well, if we can create a relationship of interdependence where both sides have a measure of control, similar to the case of Europe, similar to uh, uh, the, the coal and steel uh, uh, agreement post-war, then uh, a stronger self-interest of each side and clearer benefits um, of each side. Um, uh, uh, the water energy nexus builds on existing agreements. So uh, the water uh, exchange agreement that was signed, that uh, uh, Israel will buy desalinated water from Aqaba and Jordan will buy more water from the Sea of Galilee, speaks to an existing arrangement. The problem with, with this arrangement is that in the future, Jordan will require more and more water to buy, and it will lead to dependence rather than uh, uh, interdependence. And we also see some of the, the deals that have been struck on natural gas, um, which are important precedents 
of how energy uh, and the sale of natural gas can be important stabilizing uh, uh, opportunities geopolitically. But again, if it's only one-sided, then uh, uh, it's not sufficient to meet the geopolitical needs uh, for both sides. Um, another important aspect of why uh, uh, Jordan, uh, investment in Jordan uh, of renewable energy is important to the region, firstly to Jordan, but to the region as a whole, is that it would provide an important source of revenue revenue for Jordan. Jordan has not discovered the natural gas that Israel discovered. Um, uh, Jordan has very few natural resources. And if Jordan can gain income by selling uh, uh, renewable powered electricity uh, uh, to her neighbors, um, that strengthens uh, uh, the Jordanian economy. And that's important for Jordan. And it's also important for Israel um, as uh, Jordan uh, uh, holds the longest border uh, uh, of any Arab Arab state uh, with Jordan. So economic stability in Jordan is of key strategic interest also uh, to Israel. Um, we also, from a climate change perspective, can save about a billion tons of CO2 just in the movement of water. Um, uh, it, when we speak of 25% of Jordan's electricity um, uh, going to the, the pumping of water, um, uh, close to 10% of Israel's electricity uh, being related to desalination and pumping water, so that if we can create an interdependence that's based on renewable energy, we save a billion tons of CO2 just in the water sector. And then, of course, beyond that, um, if we use the electricity uh, uh, for other uh, uh, purposes as well. And we also need to remember that uh, nuclear uh, power is on the table. There are strong uh, uh, elements in the Jordanian government that want Jordan to build a nuclear power station. There is the occasional talk also here in Israel of the building of a nuclear power uh, station for uh, electricity production. And as an environmental organization, we think that that would be a bad uh, uh, event uh, to move forward. But if Jordan, is not, uh, if, if Jordan is not assisted in developing renewable energy, it likely will move down the nuclear track. The Russians are very keen uh, to help build a nuclear power station uh, in Jordan. Um, and then finally, uh, uh, when we talk about uh, communities based on water and energy, then we lead, uh, uh, we develop governance uh, structures. Again, similar to some of the good examples that uh, we see uh, in the European Union uh, uh, that need to manage uh, uh, these critical resources uh, uh, for both people. And therefore, uh, that leads to institutionalized uh, uh, support for stability uh, uh, between uh, our three countries. And in the future, um, uh, uh, a water energy nexus could be expanded to other uh, uh, neighbors uh, in the region, um, uh, certainly Lebanon, and in the future, who knows what happens uh, uh, in, uh, in Syria. But perhaps the demise and the destruction of, that we see at the moment in Syria is a real lesson at point. And it's no uh, secret that much research has been looked into as to how the government of Syria failed to meet a 10-year uh, drought, uh, particularly in the eastern part of Syria, that led to migration of farmers that lost their income uh, uh, in the eastern areas of, uh, of Syria uh, and, and areas where those farmers moved were the first areas were of, disruption, of, of disruption, of violence, um, that helped to contribute to the demise of the Assad uh, regime, the failure of uh, the Assad regime to deal with climate change um, uh, is increasingly identified as uh, some of the, the basis for the growth of ISIS um, uh, in, our, in our region. And if we want to uh, uh, combat the expansion of those types of hostile extremist forces, then we need to work with the moderates that have common interests. And that's what the uh, water energy uh, nexus uh, means. We're currently, uh, with the support of the Conrad Adenauer Foundation, studying uh, uh, the uh, uh, pre-feasibility of uh, the infrastructure side, 
um, how much infrastructure, what, la what size of uh, renewable uh, solar energy production would be uh, required, uh, how can we link uh, the, the electrical uh, infrastructure across our region, um, uh, what additional desalination capacity uh, would be required beyond the existing desalination that is produced in Israel in order to uh, meet the needs of all three uh, peoples, what are the economic implications of a water energy nexus, and finally, the geopolitical rationale. Uh, understanding that it's not that uh, all of the water of Jordan would come from Israel, and it's not that all of the electricity uh, uh, for Israel would come to Jordan, but where can we meet that balance that speaks to the shared uh, regional geopolitical interests of all sides. So with that, I thank you very much for the opportunity.